Welcome everyone to Studio Live. Today our presentation is about quick tips. So we'll show you a lot of different uh, tips. They're, they are quick, just as the title says, they are quick. And uh, But just things that you might have forgotten or maybe you didn't know about, if you're especially for our new users. I'll pause the screen and we will get started. Everyone should be able to see my screen now. And I'm in my Studio Online account. So if you ever see this background, you know you're inside your Studio Online uh, account. We're going to go ahead and open Studio, first of all. And by the way, if you have questions, this is also a great time for any, to jot down any questions that you might have. If you've been uh, doing renderings and have a question, we'd be glad to answer those. First of all, the most important thing, when you start a rendering, you see, of course, your workspace, and you see this is not your workspace, so you never want to design on that. You always want to make sure you design within this white page area. So first of all, what we want to do is save our renderings. So you want to click, you don't need to click Save As, but you want to click Save or Control S. And notice right now the rendering is named MM Studio One. You do not want that as a name because you have you're gonna ha if you don't name files and you have auto backups, they're gonna ha you're gonna have a ton of uh, MM Studio One names in your uh, document file or auto backup. So let's go into my Studio Designs and I'll go into Clients. And then we'll create, we're just going to put it under me, and we'll just call this a test. Now let's look, for those of you, a lot of you are knowing how to save, great, but there's a lot of people that this is their biggest issue is finding where did they save it or saying, Studio's losing my files. Studio won't lose your files, I promise is as long as you are very careful, never hit this save button until you know where it's going. Always look up here, save in. Let's click on the down arrow so we can see the, the path or the tree. You can see that it's in libraries, documents, my studio designs, clients, and then green comma daddy. I have a system every time we save a file, I don't care whether it's in studio or whether it's in anything, whether you're on a Mac or whether you're on a PC. Macs are, or Mac users uh, a long time ago, I guess, were notorious for saying, oh, I don't, I don't uh, file anything, I just throw it, and they'd use the spotlight to find files. I still, I, I guess maybe it's because I grew up as a PC user, I just don't think that's a good idea. I think you should know where everything's going to go and file it appropriately. So especially in studio, well, we have Mac users can't find files. We have PC users that can't find files, but it's not hard. And once you understand this and the light clicks on, it's like a light bulb moment. So anyway, make sure you know where you're saving something. And so this is going to go inside the Debbie Green folder. And the name, also be sure to name it. Now, if you're saving like Debbie Green and you have a, you're doing a living room, don't just call it living room, even though it would be under Debbie Green, because if you do a search in File Explorer down here, now File Explorer is not Internet Explorer. File Explorer is just your files on your computer. So you would want to name it living room and maybe put Debbie Green at the end just so that you, if you're doing a search, you could find the, you would see living room and you would know, oh yeah, it's that particular one. So let's say save. So that is now saved and you can see the name up here. So that's the first thing. That's our first quick tip for today. Now what we want to go over next is space planning. So we're going to go to the quarter inch scale tab. That's our default. All the images inside space planning are based on quarter inch scale. So if you turned on your graph paper, 
you would see one block is one foot, and four blocks, of course, is 40 or 48 feet. You can change back by right-clicking on the ruler bar, change it to feet. I mean, change it to feet or inches, rather. I was on inches. So you can change it to feet and inches by right-clicking on your ruler bar at the top. Now, a lot of people get so excited and just start designing right here or creating their floor plan right here, right now. But they need to make sure they know how big of space. So this is critical. You could change it to feet. Is your space over 45 inches? Or I can't remember what that is, but we can take a dimension line and we can stretch it out across here for letter size paper and I could also go up to view yes it's a, I didn't get it quite right but it's 45 feet so if your space is larger than this you've got to stop don't do another thing until you get your space your workspace big enough so now the first thing we can do and our images would still drag over in the correct size would be change it to legal so at this point you get about 56 feet. So you have enlarged it quite a bit, as you can see from the dimension line. If that's still not big enough, you would need to go to the View tab and you would need to edit the scale. And it, right now it says one inch equals four, four feet. So you would want to say eight. The reason you would want to say eight and not six or not some other number is because you're looking at trying to probably print it out and make sure that you can use a scale to measure it and quarter inch or eighth inch, those are going to be your easiest tools that designers use. So keep in mind that. Now, you just got doubled the size at this point. Instead of the 56, you're looking at 212, so uh, or 112 rather. So you're looking at a quite a bit larger space. And most of the time, now to design a full house on on a single page might be you might have to break that up into a couple rooms on a page. And, and then of course you can add tabs or duplicate this tab if you want to and move and keep doing another section of the house if you want or the office whatever you're doing let's do one other thing while we're in space planning Let me delete that line I just highlight it now if you want to make sure you grab a dimension line make sure you see your cross because if I click here that does nothing that's air even though you think well maybe that is part of the dimension line it's not you have to click on an image, if you want to highlight an image, you have to make sure your mouse is over part of the image, whether it's the line or the dimension. You see, it doesn't even recognize this number. I would have to get to the line. So I have to either go to the line or the arrow to change that. So I'm going to delete it and press my delete key. And we're going to do another dimension line. I'm going to do a straight down one. And we're going to, what well, our object here is, is I want to show you, you can customize this dimension line and then save it to your custom tab. So we're going to go into the templates. And we'll go in, I've created a category and, or a folder inside templates called miscellaneous. And I already have one dimension line here. But I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're going to right click and we're going to property. And we can either go to fill, but I'll show you another way to get, I mean, uh, go to text. But we're going to go to the line right now because this is the only way you can change the arrows. So say that you really like another arrow. Say that you like this little arrow. You can come here, change your arrows, click OK, and then our little arrows have changed. Now, if you want to change the, the font of uh, the font or the fill, the fill color for the the line, you can come to the line color, change that. If you want to, let's go back to home. And here is our font. And remember, on this is called the ribbon in Studio. Whether you're in Word or 
Excel or any of those or PowerPoint, this is called the ribbon. And so the ribbon has tabs, the format tab on the ribbon and the view tab. And then, of course, we have our quick access toolbar here. And if you haven't added page setup and export, I highly recommend you do that as well. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So now that we're on the, we're, we still have the dimension line highlighted. We'll come to, we're, we're going to get a font named Flux Architect. I don't, you, I love Damned Architect, but there's some symbols it won't show, so I don't use that one as much. Even though it's one of my favorites, it, uh, go, oops, my mouse is going a little too fast. I just find, there we are, Flux Architect. If you don't have that downloaded, I'm almost positive that's on the forum as a, a, a link to download it, but you get, they're free, and we'll click that. And now you can see, notice how the font has changed. So if I want to, this works for anything, if you want to save it to your custom tab, you just uh, right click or control C to copy it. Move over to your index in the custom tab, wherever, make sure you're filing it where you want it to be, and then paste. And then you can tap twice. And you can type a title in. And I put uh, Dim Line Flux Architect. And then I'm going to delete this one. We'll drag that over. As soon as my delete key starts working. Well, there we go. I don't know. My keys weren't working. Now we can slide, just drag this over. And that one I did not make red. That one I did. So you can see how. And then you would just duplicate these. If you like, you don't want to change that every time. And we don't have preferences in Studio that allow you to make that permanent. So you would have to keep delete, uh, deleting that line, excuse me, uh, duplicating that line and then changing the dimensions. And you could have a horizontal and a vertical one so that you wouldn't have to change those. So you could, uh, but that's a great tip. One of our users said that she, well, she called in asking what to do. And I, I don't know if it was Anna or Jerry, one of them came up with saving it to the custom tab, which is a great, uh, which was a great idea. All right, now we're gonna move back to uh, the elevation tab. And I'm going to go ahead, another thing that we think is a smart idea is to remove pages that you're not going to use. That way you don't get mixed up. Now this one's going to give me a warning because there's something on it, but that's okay, I don't want it. Now the half inch scale, that is for the kitchen module. Everything in the rooms tab in the kitchen module is based on half inch scale. So all the images are based on half inch. You can always change them. You can always change to, uh, like for space planning, all the images, if you change your scale to eighth inch, you just drag an image over and you would resize it according, because it would you just put in the real inches of what you really want the size to be. So we'll remove, remove that page. And we're going to go ahead and drag over a wall template. And as I scroll down, as, as I hover over those, these are some of the wall templates. If yours are in blue, then you haven't purchased that module yet. And by the way, just so that you know how to find what modules you have, you can click Options, About Studio. This tells you what build you have. You should have three points. Five, release one, and all these are my modules, installed walls, marketing, all the JVT modules, the bedding module, storyboard, and kitchen. And then, of course, hopefully you know about the question mark. That's the studio online, uh, the searchable manual. That's a great tool as well. So anytime you need some help, if you want anything to do with photo knockout, uh, photo clip, just type in photo in the studio help file and it'll be right there for you. So this is one of my favorite uh, templates is the legal size uh, 
one wall showing and I usually don't pull one with that those windows over because I uh, don't seem to have, haven't had that one as much but I just like them without any windows and then I add my windows let's drag over this template and notice as I drag over notice how it turns to a wireframe view it's not a hot potato you don't have to drop it but center it on your page and then drop it and when we drag this over I'm going to go ahead most of the time I use legal paper so I'm going to go ahead and switch this to legal and a lot of people ask well I don't have legal pay or my printer doesn't print legal mm, I'm, we tell them, I don't I don't know of any printer that really won't print legal you just need to go get some legal paper and change your paper size to legal now I'm going to stretch out that since I've changed to legal I'm going to stretch out this template now notice my wall my window stretched out too but that's okay you can always change your and I'm going to change back to I uh, see I'm in feet still I'm going to right click on my ruler bar and change to inches and I'm going to change my window back to 40 and you could of course change it to be anything you wanted it to be and you could go get another window by as you drag this over remember it's a group of groups so there's the crown and a baseboard is a group the floor is a group the wall all of these are a group they're grouped as in for one group now and if you want to sub select like if I wanted to delete that window I could just sub select it by clicking one more time and hit delete I'm going to bring it back because I want it but I do if you want the easiest way to get started with scale it's not hard at all to get started to create a scaled rendering you just started at the very beginning I'll draw a dimension line from the top uh, from the bottom of the crown and if you don't have crown you would just click click one more time again and delete that crown we're going to bring it back as well and you control Z brings anything back so we're going to bring now I'm going to highlight or sub select the window and I'm going to march it up with my arrow keys until it just about turns transparent or you can't hardly tell and I could move it up one more because I could see it but see how it looks transparent now you know you got it just right and you could always zoom in so if you had triple windows you brought over a triple window you would do the same thing I just happen to have a single one if you had double windows here you'd have a dimension line between the two of them knowing how how many inches are between the two inches uh, between the two windows on the left and on the right side so you just continue on making sure you got that uh, got your window or got yeah got your wall space to scale now if you're new and starting out with studio this is what we recommend you start with one facing wall don't try to do the sides yet you just you can't eat the elephant all at once but you can eat it one bite at a time so start out easy studio does a lot and is very robust but don't start out you want to do it fast and feel accomplished yesterday maybe you weren't doing renderings and today you are so that's totally different and it's a totally new studio is a graphic program so it's a lot of new skills for people so don't don't try too hard we had one caller trying to do a uh, tray ceiling and I asked uh, I asked our user I said now are you designing the ceiling the tray ceiling and she said no and I said you don't even need to show that don't show a ceiling at all and she she was so relieved because she'd been working on getting the angles and you can imagine you know if you're not the architect you don't need to do all that now sometimes you're doing bookcases and designing those that's totally different you can use our right now you could use our kitchen module cabinetry and create any kind of uh, a book bookcase if you're trying to do that all right let's go to the back to elevation we're going to go to drapery and we're going to pinch pleat and I just click slide over and I'm going to go get a buttoned lead edge drag that over 
And if you want to go up to the top, fine. And if you do, then you're going to want to stretch this down a little bit. Even though it distorts the rod just ever so slightly, it doesn't do it that much. So you, you'd be fine. Or if you want to put the rod halfway in between, it would just be totally up to you where you wanted to position that. One tip that we want, a quick tip I wanted to show you here is say that you wanted, I'm going to zoom in, say that you wanted to have bigger pleats. These are, are the traditional four inch pleats. So let's go to the elevation tab again, go all the way down to number nine, embellish, and then we'll go to headings. We'll slide over. And notice there's a bunch of headings here that you could make these changes with, but we want to get the, the pinch pleat. We'll position it right on top here. Now I want to click away, click, so that I can stretch this down. And then I can use the dimension line. Say I want a six inch pleat. I'm going to measure from right here because that's the top of the pleat that's really not as accurate. So we're going to stretch down right here and go to the bottom of the pleat. And I'm going to leave that at 610. So that's good enough. And then I'm going to hold, and I'm going to duplicate these just by dragging them across. And the trick is just hold your control key down drag and drop and I'm just keep doing that I can position them you could do control D but then you still have to keep moving them every time so we like this feature of just dragging them across now I'm going to zoom to uh, zoom out to fit page these are the two favorite zoom tools you need to zoom in and out constantly, and it's very easy to do with Studio. Now we're going to go ahead. Now I'm going to leave one side, the shorter pleats, maybe to show the client what the, the difference looks like. And you might not do a six-inch pleat uh, for a nine-inch, uh, a nine-inch, a nine-foot ceiling, but you definitely would if you're going higher then nine, maybe 10, you're, you're definitely going to want to make those pleats longer on a pinch pleat or a goblet pleat or whatever a fan, whatever you're doing. So let's highlight. I'm going to right click. Well, first, let me show you before I do that. This is critical. You remember this. If you're trying to color, add, or fill a, a hardware, before you ungroup, before you ungroup this design, you have to cut, you have to fill the hardware. Otherwise, it's locked down. And somehow in programming that got changed. Now, so we want to go in and we're going to fill. And I'm just going to, for right now, I want to fill it with this color, with this darker mahogany color. And then I'm going to, while that's all highlighted, the whole design is highlighted. I'm going to add fabric. So we're going to go to fill. We're going to go to custom. Notice how always pay attention to these little grid marks. And there's nothing in there, so I need to go load. And then we'll go to the desktop because that's where I have a lot of uh, files. And I'll go get fabrics. I was blind for a minute, but I can see now. Couldn't find my fabrics. And we'll go get this one. And we'll open. Now you think, okay, we're ready to go. And the sample. Always make sure your sample shows here. If that is blank, you it's not going to fill anything. But we always, always on fabric, without exception, you're going to need to go edit. And you're going to need to change one of these. I, we recommend you always change the height because most of the time you're working with a vertical a repeat, but I say that with caution. I'm really not saying you enter a repeat here. What I am saying is if you were to take a tape measure, and this was a swatch laying on your desk, and you were to measure with your, with your tape measure from here to here, what that figure is, is what you put here. So it, it, it's not your repeat. 
it is not the repeat of the fabric because I don't see a full repeat here. So if I were to put, say, 27 in, which that's probably what that is, it would be wrong. It would be big, too large. So we're going to end by having this checked, keep aspect ratio, this automatically changes the other, the width to be the in the aspect ratio of the height. So we'll go say OK. And now that sample's still there and that's highlighted. So we'll click OK again. A lot of, now notice, I did this on purpose. Notice the pleats are not colored and the, or didn't have, fill with fabric. I could have grouped that or what I should have done if I thought about it but if you're like me and want instant gratification half the time, even though I know better, I will go and I want to see the pleat. So that's the first thing I do. So all I need to do is make sure I grab those pleats. And the reason I can go into the rod and into the drapery is because they're all part of a group. So you can't select something unless you select the entire group. But so these weren't grouped together or anything. So I can now right click properties, fill, go to my custom tab, click the fabric. Notice how that wasn't there just a minute ago. So I click, say OK. And now we have our pleats are now filled with the color. Now let's say that, oh, I don't think I like the color of that rod now. Now I haven't ungrouped anything, so I can still change the rod color. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to properties, fill, and I'm going to go to the gradient tab. And I'm going to start, and I'm going to go to more, more colors because I want to use this uh, charcoal color. So I'm going to say OK. If I were to leave that all one solid color, it'd be hard to see the detail in the rod. So that's why I'm changing both the start and the end point of the gradient. So I'll come grab this again. Say OK. And you can tell that's still so dark. So I need to come change the end point again and go to custom and just move up just a little. Move up the or slide it up. Now you can see just, and I just, you want it very slight from the start to the end. You want it very slight, which that's going to give me a nice highlight. And I want to choose this horizontal one, not a vertical one. So I'll choose this one. And if I hadn't have chose anything, I can't go back. But this wasn't selected a minute ago. But you can see how nice and round that's going to make that rod. And if you wanted to change, uh, your rod. I'm not going to take time to do that, but you could do that. You could highlight the rod, delete the rod, go get more rod, uh, go get an iron rod, go get different finials, whatever you want to do, you can do that too. So now we'll zoom to fit page again. And this one did have a band on the lead edge with buttons. So I'm going to show you, uh, show about that too. That's easy to change, but you can't sub-select it. It's not like trim. So this one, you would right-click, go to Image Components, and there you see the drapery band. So we want to choose Fill, and we want to go to Pattern, because we want to, I want to put a solid on there. So I'm just going to choose the background. Now, we have to notice this is the sample. Always be aware that if you could learn anything today. Be aware of where you are and, and what you're doing in studio because there's so many choices. If you miss one, then all of a sudden you go, well, it didn't do anything. Well, you didn't do something. That's what I, I go, oh, man, I didn't do that. So it makes a difference. If you don't do it, it's not going to not gonna even change anything. So we're going to notice the difference if we just left that one. So we'll say OK. And we want to come over here. Notice my sample is still this. So I want to come and change. See the little grid marks here? It was on none. But make sure your little grid, that's your selection grid. And now my sample shows that color. Say OK. 
and notice how our lead edge or the band already changed. So say OK. And we need to do it to this one as well. And I, I tried. I couldn't highlight both of these and do that at the same time. I was having, well, you could do them individually, but this thing just is easy to go pick the band because there would be two sections of these. There would be two different bands, but I ended up just doing that, doing it this way. I think there's a six of one, half a dozen of the other ways you can do the same thing or accomplish the same thing. Say OK. And remember, I can't change it until, because that's the color of the band right now, is that fabric. So we'll say OK and OK again. So now we have those two things changed, and we can highlight our dimension line by clicking right on the dimension image and hit delete. And we'll zoom to fit page again. Now let's let's say that we want to color the wall. Let's open Benjamin Moore, our paint deck. If you don't have this installed on your PC, now if you have Studio Online, it's already installed for you. But if you don't have Studio Online, the link to download or not just well download and install the Benjamin Moore Virtual Fan Deck is uh, in our forum. So uh, you can go there and. If you have that question, and I can give you a link to the uh, Benjamin, that link on our forum. Now, as soon as you're going, oh, this is great. Look, I'm seeing both of these. I can use the eyedropper tool to change that. But as soon as I click here, watch what happens. That goes behind. The Benjamin Moore fan deck is still open, but so is Studio. But whatever window is active, this is taking up the full screen. Studio's taking up your full size of your monitor. So that is going to go behind there. So it's the second, it's like a piece of paper. There's a piece of paper behind there, which is the Benjamin Moore fan deck. So let's right click down here. And then we don't want to show the desktop, which I use, I like that one. But you want to show windows side by side. And now you're going, wow, that's small. And you could, you would still be able, because I have a fairly large monitor, I could change the wall color like this. But if you're working on a smaller monitor, you just squish that over, resize it manually, move this over. And now we're ready to highlight or find our paint color. Now you can, if you didn't know, this is a great, if you're looking for colors, how fast can you go through the fan deck of Benjamin Moore like this? You can even, I think, hit these arrows, yes, and just go tap, 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 and you start going through whatever colors. But if you know the color, you can type it in. I think that's Mansfield or S. And then it'll come to one solid color. Let's highlight the wall. Now, I didn't highlight just the wall. Notice that everything's included. If I were to fill this right now, it would fill everything in here. Not the drapery, but it would fill everything else. So I want to click one more time. Notice how you're thinking, well, how do you know you just got the wall? But look at the crown. Part of it's not in, in the green edit point. You're thinking, well, I bet the baseboard is, but it's not. It just happens to be the exact same width as the wall and happens to be down at the bottom of the wall. So that's why it looks like it is, but it's not. And you'll soon see that as soon as I drag over the eyedropper tool. So here it shows my color, and I'm going to click OK, and it filled it nicely. Now, say they go, well, you know, I don't think my Mansfield tan looks exactly like what I want, so I'm going to sub-select the wall again, use the eyedropper tool, and I need to move that window out of the way a little bit, and come get a color that I want that I think might be better. So it looks like I'm going to have to match the wall color to the fabric whether it's an upholstered piece or whether it's a window treatment, you could, uh, you're could you able to do that easily with the eyedropper tool. Now, 
Um, if you want, now notice we still, we're a little small on the monitor for studio. You can, if you want to leave Benjamin Moore up, you can double click to fill the whole screen with studio. So you're right back to where you were. And always make sure another quick tip for studio, click away. If you have some, if you have this highlighted, I always try to practice when I finish doing whatever I'm doing, clicking away. And clicking away means clicking on an area inside your studio program that is not an image, not a photograph, not the wall, not the drapery, not an upholstered piece. This is clicking away or you could even click on the gray if you and some people will have bigger depending on your monitor you have a larger or smaller gray area on your monitor so you'll notice sometimes when you go to a laptop it may be a smaller or it may be a little larger and you may see some at the top so it just depends on your monitor so don't let that uh, bother you if you see that now the next thing we're going to do we're going to I'm going to control A to select everything and I could group if if I were really keeping this I'd probably uh, group all this so that all that would stay together I wouldn't want my pleats accidentally moving on me but I'm just going to hit delete because I want to show you another tip and we're going to go to the rooms tab we're going to go to the living room module we're going to go to chairs and I'm going to drag over this accent chair. I'm going to make it just a little bit larger, not too much. And of course, you would, uh, if you're measuring this chair to kind of get it to scale and knowing a chair that was similar to this that you were going to use, you would measure from here to this back leg because that's going to be the one closest uh, to the wall. And remember, anything sticking out is going to appear a little larger. So you always want to measure the back. The furthest one the furthest uh, back point of your image now let's just say I had another question from one of our users and I thought this was a good tip when I helped her decide what to do we will go to the bedroom module and we'll go to pillows and I bet you already have figured out what is going to be the problem here And let's just say I want a 16 inch pillow, so I can type 16, 16, or I could leave it a lumbar too, or a rectangular pillow. Now, no matter what I do, I cannot get this pillow, even if I were to ungroup this. So, what I want to do is sub select, and then I can ungroup, and I'm going to sub select this one and ungroup. The re these are different. This module is different because it was created before we were doing a lot of the uh, sub-selecting and break apart images. So this module is just a little bit different. So I'm going to highlight both of these and then I'm going to duplicate it because right now I can't still bring this to the front. I still can't do that. So, but the trick is you duplicate it and then, well, I might need to properties and go to protection and it's protected from moving. So you need to duplicate it and I'm going to group it together. I think it already is. And then I can move it back. No, it wasn't. It wasn't because here's my little piece on the front. Make sure my cursor is a move cursor. Well, I'm going to zoom in. If you can't get something, when you zoom in, you can always get it. Oh, I have to, I forgot. This one is uh, protected from moving as well. Whoops, I clicked on the wrong thing image no properties protection and from moving uncheck that
and there we go. So now that p uh, pillow, if you have a little bit of a side view, that's how you can use the furniture module and get something back behind it. And if you wanted to save that, then save it to your custom tab, and that way it's already done for you and you don't have to do anything else. And I see that I didn't move that back quite far enough. So you can just highlight both of those, move it back just a little bit, and there you go. And let's go now to, oh, well, uh, while this is up, uh, I know that a lot of you, we seem to get maybe a couple of times a month, at least we get someone to call in and say they've encountered an invalid argument error message. That happens if Studio has not finished processing a a function or something you're trying to do. It's still trying to process it. Sometimes people try to drag an image, like they'll drag this over and then they'll try to drag it back over to the, and throw it back to the index before and Studio maybe hadn't finished processing it and you're thinking, oh, I didn't mean to do that. And you're, But you can just hit delete. You don't have to throw it back to the index. Sometimes that can cause it. Anna and I and Jerry and Merlin, we try to get the uh, error message, but we can't seem to do it. So uh, we, and if, if it, so it doesn't happen all the time and it seems to happen to newer users at first. You don't have to go slow with studios. You've seen, I haven't been going that slow, but there is, it, you do need to give it time to finish processing, especially if you've got a large rendering that you might, that you might encounter and have an issue with. So just the invalid argument, all you need to do, if you're inside of Studio Online, you click the power off button, just, or log off button. If you're not, if you have the installed version of Studio and you encounter, encounter that error message, all you do is control, alt, delete, or I think you can even right click on, on your taskbar and end task. That's what you're, you're trying to end your task. And so when that end task uh, window comes up, all you do is find your find studio and hit end task and that will close it. People also ask about um, are when I uninstall studio, is are my MMS files safe? And because your MMS files, your studio files or MMS files, because they are saved inside a totally different place, they're not installed where your software is installed. When you uninstall Studio, all you're uninstalling is just the software, not your files. That is with any Word, Word files or Excel, uh, QuickBooks file, all of those are not stored inside the software. They're stored outside the software. So you can safely uninstall a software without deleting your personal files. We've had a lot of questions. A lot of you are um, upgrading. Maybe you have Windows 7 or Windows 8 and you're upgrading to 10, Windows 10, or maybe you have a new computer or you're purchasing a new computer, and of course it comes with Windows 10 if you're a PC user, and Windows uh, Studio works fine with Windows 10. Don't worry about upgrading to Windows 10. We, it works fine. If you're upgrading from 7 or 8 to Windows 10, sometimes you do have to uninstall Studio and reinstall it if your serial number won't stay activated, if your software won't stay activated. Let me and be sure and be writing down questions if you have if you have those. Let me zoom back out. I want to show you the next thing I want to show is the text box. So if you uh, we had a question when I sent out my webinar notification or invitation, we had uh, someone email us and ask if we would talk about text boxes and there are limitations with our text box and the text box you get that from the big T right here and you can enlarge that text box just like I did 
and you can have lots of sentences. What you cannot do is say that you said, you know, I just want this first line bolded. Watch what happens. It bolds everything. If you want it red, it's going to all the text is going to be red. If you want it italicized, all the text going in that box is going to be italicized. What you can do is create another text box. You just start drawing your text box, and you can draw it as big as you want or as small as you want, and you can also change the size if you want to. By if you just draw it a little bit, you can change it. So I'll press Control Z to go back. But now I could make a heading here and then line and highlight both of these, line them to the left. They happen to be lined up. But you could line them to the left so they would be right in line. But that, if you wanted this to be bold, that to be normal, then you would have to create two different text boxes. Another, uh, let's go, now I'm going to go to Firefox. And I want to go to our website. Let me see. Yep, okay. On our website, say that you're looking for, you can't remember, our, of course, our phone number's right here, but say that you're looking for support options. You could type support down and go to the bottom. If you're looking for anything, type a one word down at our, down in our search box. And this will show you the different options. There, it, it searches the entire site, and it will show you. Then you click wherever you want to go. Looks like my internet slowing down for a minute. And here we go. So then, say that you wanted to search. Maybe you're looking for a particular topic. Maybe storyboard or logo. Let's see what's under logo. So if you're looking for something, you don't want to spend the time looking for it. And normally the search is faster than this. I don't know if it's because I'm on the webinar or what, but anyway. So training, you could go, you know, maybe you're looking for a course. I'm going to stop searching after this. This is so <laughs> painful. So you can go look for, maybe you're looking for different things. You could just look here, find what you want, and go check out our shopping cart. Uh, here's our shopping cart. You can go right to the shopping cart to find anything that you need. Let's one more thing I want to go to in here. And that I'm in my or your or the customer hub, my customer hub account. And it's uh to get to that too on our site, you can go to support and it's the first option, customer hub. For those of you that don't, I'm hoping most of you on the forum, on this webinar today uh, know and have logged into your Customer Hub account because it has so many things. So if you click on my account, well, I guess it logged me back out. If you click on my account, you can edit your profile. You can make a payment if you're on a payment plan or on a subscription if you're Studio Online. You can uh, view invoices. We, Since we moved to this particular system in 2010, all your order history would be here too. Here's your serial number. Now, yours is not going to have X's. I've just X'd mine out. But be very careful how you copy it. Don't get a space. If you get invalid format, that means you've got a, bad, you've got a space in your uh, serial number, so copy and paste it again. Here's the link to download Studio. Anytime you get a new computer, come here, download the latest version of Studio. You can see Earphone View, the style guide, uh, 
the you can go to our cart here, mini clips, and then let's go to the library here. Here's lots of different videos here, mini clips here. Those are fabulous. They're only three to five minute uh, videos on one particular feature or function. Now, this is the Collection 5. That is this year's. And so you, all the webinars are recorded. And today's session will be right here. It's free. And you can come here. This was a great one. If you missed a uh, quick photo editing with Earphone View. This shows how to make a rug in perspective. It's a great one. All these were great. Uh, jump on the if you were interested in social media. Uh, join the one we did in September. Let's go to the forum now. Let me see if I'm really still logged in. It might have logged me out. The, when, when you see these passing through, you can click. These are live links. So here's the Sherwin-Williams color tool. I change these out every once in a while, but there's a few that I won't change. Like uh, I might change that one after a while. And the poll, I would love all of you to go, what do you charge for studio renderings? Just click and it'll take you right to that particular post. There's the woven woods uh, for Horizon, all the different uh, samples you can download. And this one I keep up here, Uninstall and Reinstall Studio. That is a lengthy, well, not that lengthy, but it is a step-by-step -step uninstalling and reinstalling studio. So that's a great one if you're getting the new computer updating or whatever you need to do or bring in your IT person here, that's a great one. Let me go back to the main page, and I want to... We're going to go, well, we'll go into this one I want to show you. I just posted today. And we're in January or February. We're going to be talking about one of, part of what we're going to be talking about in either the February or January is adding outdoor scenes, some tips and tricks there. Now, I want you can go here, and I would like you to add your own. But be sure when you do that, click on the, camera icon. Don't click on attach images. That You want to click on the camera icon so they show in small little thumbnails like this. And, the, and by doing that, let me show you how they look. You can scroll to them. The, and these are my personal photos that I've taken. This is one, a trip when I was in Haiti on a mission trip. And this is a, on our property. And that's on my backyard. And that's uh, Lake Del Hollow when I was on a houseboat trip. The same thing, but a different daylight. And I've got some more. I just wanted to add these quick before today. But you want to add outdoor scenes that are yours, not copyrighted. I don't want you to get them from the Internet, anything copyrighted. So please only upload your photos. And you would always need to start a new post and click the photo icon, well, that's already, I've already clicked it, so you would just click upload and add as many as you have. And if you don't have but one or two, start snapping some. Just go out in your backyard, snap, but make sure it's kind of picked up. You don't want it to look messy. It's another thing about a presentation. All presentations should look good. So these will be outdoor scenes that we will use behind a door, the glass. We're going to fill the glass of a door, of a window, and we'll show you how to do triple windows and what to do with the little highlights on the windows so, and how to scale the photo. So that's going to be a webinar coming up uh, in January or February. So please, we would love for you guys to share so people can have a, a large library of photos to select from. Any, like if you're at a resort, you know, to show the beach because you might be doing a beach home and or yeah uh, someone that has a rental property so check that out too and let's go back check out that and please share we would love it if you would share and i want to go into because merlin posted something i found i talked to her the other day and she has moved and been super busy with her new house 
but she's chiming in a, a ton now. So this, uh, the question from Juanita Strasville was, she wanted to uh, create a scalloped edge on a drapery panel. So she, Merlin is showing you can. She's telling you what to do, and then showing you. And see, this one is not. Whoops! I just closed it because it didn't have the arrow. So that is one of the reasons we like to use the camera icon instead of just uploading them like files because that didn't have the arrow where you can scroll through it like a slideshow. And here is, again, the she always uses the graph paper, so you get them even, and it's showing you how to create the by using uh, the Bezier tool. That's what she's showing you. So I'm going to hit the back arrow here so I don't close it back out again. All right, I'm going to go back to this post and we're going to open Anna if you will come on so that we can uh, open it up for qu or start taking questions and also notice right here this is the just a short clip of Irfan view of about that rug watch this it's incredible to create a perspective on a rug literally especially if you have Studio Online, literally takes, because we already have this uh, add-on installed inside Earphone View for you. But if you haven't downloaded it, we have instructions here about downloading it on the forum. Okay, Anna, sorry. <laughs> you can come on now. No problem. I always like to heads up that you're ready for me. Well, first I have to tell something funny. Uh, we started out, before you ever started drawing, Wanda, ask the same questions as what you were going to go over. It was just, it just couldn't have hit at a better time. Talk about the wall, how to change it, how, how do you fix all of that. So you covered everything she needed and she didn't even know you were going to be doing that today. That's great. So that turned out really good. Now, uh, Scott was asking if you could show the Zoom tool again. He still is struggling just a little bit with the Zoom tool and how it works. Okay. Like, okay, are you saying just this tool here? Yes, just that tool. Okay, okay. so what, and a lot of people, Scott, you're not the only one that has this issue or doesn't totally comprehend what it does. This Zoom, these are the two Zoom tools we're talking about. Now, there's lots of Zoom tools up here, like Zoom in and out, 25%, and all, so there's a lot of them, but we've picked out the two most used. The zoom within rectangle, what I do is I decide, uh, first you have to activate it. And so it turns orange by clicking on it. And then your cursor changes. And I'm going to start, and you never start here. You need to start a little above it and come below what you want to magnify. That's all that tool does. It's a magnification tool. It doesn't change your rendering or the scale of your rendering at all. It's just a magnification. It's like you've taken a, a magnifying glass and looked at this pillow here. And I could even zoom in a little more. I, I, and I think I'm in full zoom at this point. So now we can hit zoom to fit page and we go right back. So you just click say that I want to look at this. I don't want to look at this. I need to be close up here. So notice I'm starting a little above it and a little on the out. I give a little bit on the right, left, top, and bottom. And your dotted line is what it's going to zoom to. So I hope that helps. All right, Anna. Oh. Okay, and then Kathy just wanted to mention something that she loves to use when she's using Studio and she needs an item to move just a little. She loves to use the arrow keys or the nudge tool that we have in the ribbon area. Oh, she used, I use my keyboard too. Yes. But yes. So you could use, the, she's talking about, make sure, another thing I meant to go over, notice your little sections here. There's the arrange, the nudge, shapes, drawing, layers, size. They're all in little sections, and every single, like your home uh, tab on the ribbon, it has different ones, clipboard, page. So 
when you know all of these different areas and what they do, it'll take a little bit to know all of what they do, but if you see a little bitty down arrow, click, there's more. There's always more. New page, create a copy. That's the duplicate page. So this, what uh, she was, ta whoops, I don't want to sub-select that. So you can either use the little nudge tool or your arrow keys. They do the same thing. All right, Anna? Okay. Now, Carolyn was uh, having a little bit more of a problem. She's wanting to know about the wood grain. She needs it to be in different directions. And I know our wood grain in our option, when you right-click, is not going to give you but one direction. That's right. But, That's right. But I know that we have created different directions, and I know that the kitchen module, we already have those created. Right. And you can go and download those yourself too but these are in one grain I mean they're going definitely horizontal they're definitely going horizontal so you could get that they we have different textures if you have the kitchen module in customer hub you can download all those files and save them inside I would put them inside your my studio design I would put them inside there and then put them in templates. Now, so Debbie, I would, do you have the templates? Do you have any of the wood grain from the lounge, that particular? I don't think I do. I don't, I don't think I saved them in this. I haven't saved them in this one. Are they, you want to point me to the forum? What, uh, you might want to show them on the forum where those are because I know that we do have them in vertical and horizontal, but they need... Y'all need to are know. On, are, you, are you talking about on the form or in Customer Hub? In Customer Hub. In Customer okay. Hub. When we save them, they're JPEGs, and you have to bring them in just like fabric. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's you right. You don't bring them in as a color. So here is the file box in Customer Let me see if I've been logged out. Nope, not yet. See, let's go. Kitchen module, the... the those are the cabinet styles with fill, but I think these are the finishes that that we're talking about. So if yes. you have that kitchen module, this is the one you would download the file, put it where I was talking about, and then you could bring each of those JPEGs in like you would fabric. You you have to do it like like Anna said as fabric and fill. It's kind of like wallpaper or marble or whatever else you're doing. And while you're in the lounge, Debbie, can you go back to your post that you did about the scenes and go over one more time of the order of how they need to post that? Sure. Okay, here's my post. So I've started it, and you can see I did the little thumbnails. The only way that they're going to show these little thumbnails here is by clicking. This is a new post. This is pretend like I'm not Debbie Green that I'm somebody else, and this is what you would see. You would see this, and it says write something. Right above write something is that camera icon. You would click upload, go find those, maybe put them, uh, maybe go through your photos if you already think you have some, put them on your desktop, put them all together, and then put them one at a time. Don't put the folder. You're going to have to put the individual files on there. So go put, and you can put, I'm not sure. Anna, is there a limit on the photos you could put in there, the thumbnails? Yes, right now it's five. I may change it to seven later, but right now it's five. Oh, it is five. Well, I got I hit the limit. A good thing I wasn't putting any more on there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyway, okay. that I hope that answers that. Okay. Now this one I don't totally understand, but maybe you will, Debbie. Can we create subgroups? I have discovered the subgroups that are in the rendering, but is there a way I can create a subgroup? I guess she's talking about just grouping things together. Uh, uh, um, let's. Are you talking about the custom tab, or are you talking about... No, I think she's uh, talking about like when we bring a, a template in, we've got it all grouped together, so she's right. going, wanting to know how to group items together. Well, like if... You, I'm just 
doing these on here. Like, say that this was a, a design that you really wanted. I don't know one would, but let's highlight all of that. Then you can just press Control-G to group it. And if I had another, I could group another group of those inside that group if I needed to. You, you can create, like I could put this one. Now I could highlight all of those and group that. Right, and then you could just click on one part of it, it would subselect. Right. right. See, it's okay. all grouped as one right now, but I could hit this one and it would subselect these images, just those images. And I could delete, and then I'm back to this. Okay. Now, can you show again how you created the split page where you mm -hmm. were using the Benjamin Moore? Okay, let's open Benjamin. Oh, well, it happens to be open. So we can right click here and show windows side by side. That's probably going to be the easiest way. To, oh, look what, and see what's going to happen is because I had three windows open. So that, well, this is a good thing to show. So you'd want to close that one, right click, and show windows side by side. So now you just have the two. You can slide that over. Just manually let your cursor be a horizontal and slide it over so that Studio is large. The Benjamin Moore Paint Deck does not have to be half the size of your monitor because it, it, it's not going to show that much. It's not a big piece of software. Okay. Now, this is a good question that you really don't have to show anything. But uh, she was concerned about if she uninstalled and reinstalled, would she lose her items in the custom tab? Uh, yes, you. That is part of the software. That is part of the software. But and you don't well, lose that. You don't okay. lose it, no. But you, it. You have to do. We have that on the forum. You just would copy that from. Uh, it's in your shapes folder. Inside. Let's go back to Studio Online. I mean, but when you want to uninstall, you don't lose your shapes folder. No, you don't lose it. But you don't automatically get it back either. It, you have to do, there are some steps that you have to do. See this shapes right here? That is the folder that you're wanting to copy. So if you save things to your custom tab, now you can't rename that. You can't change it. If you change anything about that folder, you it won't work. Studio won't recognize it. Studio own the software only recognizes, and you have to put it inside my documents and inside, or just really inside my studio designs for it to work. So, and we have a step how to do that inside the forum. So don't worry, you don't have to lose your shapes folder or your custom tab. But as a rule, if you uninstall the program and reinstall it, the shapes folder does not go away. No, it does not. But it doesn't automatically come back either. Oh, yeah, it does. Well, no, it does, but not your custom one. Okay. You have to copy that and copy over it. replace it rather. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, now, uh, Scott's wanting to know if there's any fonts over in the form that I can search. Yes, the best way to search in the form is just go in there and look for fonts. And we have a whole uh, list oh. of different fonts mm -hmm. already there. Yeah. Yes. Merlin, I, didn't she create that post? Yes, she did. And it's uh, it's extensive, yeah. And it's very extensive. It's pages. It's several mm -hmm. pages. But keep in mind, there are certain architect fonts that are that have all the characters. That bothers me that some of them don't. I don't know why in the world they wouldn't do that. But I think it was the inch mark on damned architect. Yes. Got, there's something. Copyright that doesn't, work. doesn't. Yeah, copyright yeah. doesn't work on some of them. So anyway, just be careful of that. Okay, I think that uh, covers all the questions I've had today, Debbie.
Okay, so the, the next thing would be our two winners for the $50 gift certificate. Okay. Again, it gives me a name I can't pronounce. <laughs> Amanda, P-R-O-K-O-P-I, and the other one's easy, Wanda Smith. Wanda Smith. All right. And, Anna, did you already send the emails to those people? I did. Okay, so look for uh, Andrea and Wanda. Look in your inbox. Amanda. Amanda. Oh, I did. <laughs> we can't even say her first name. Uh, Amanda, look in your inbox for your um, code, your special code, and you can uh, you have fifty dollars you can use on whatever you want to use in studio. And Anna, I think you also put if you don't have the wall template. Uh, template module. Uh, you can purchase that. I think it's forty-seven dollars. Anna has put that in the uh, the chat, so you can uh, purchase that if you'd like. And I also and, put the links in the chat about Benjamin Moore that they can okay. go to that on the form. And I think I put the font one in there also. Oh, good, good. So we'll leave that open just for a minute. And uh, but we thank everybody for joining us today. And our next webinar will be in January, and we will see you then. And remember, this webinar has been recorded, and it's inside your Customer Hub account. And it's free this year. All the webinars are free. Bye, everyone. Have a great day.